Swindoll High School um, for the greenhouse group, as you probably know. Um, so for our preparation of going there, we had to learn about the site and then make our visions and goals to um, learn what we wanted to do. So uh, the Center for Youth is an after school program uh, which involves a multitude of activities for kids to do after school. Um, instead of going home, uh, these kids can stay after and do a program such as the Greenhouse Club like we did. They can do activities like video games, basketball, sports, all sorts of things. We're even making a go-kart right now run by solar energy. So this is a very, very highly functional organization that does a lot of good for a lot of kids, okay? So when we went there, um, we were split, Megan and I were split into two different rooms. And for the first hour, what we would do is we would meet with kids and meet with our fellow coordinators. And we would run like a, sort of like a personal growth activity. For example, like the last week when we were there, we had did this activity where we wrote down a number of traits that we personally had. We'd take the good traits and bad traits. we put those traits on a piece of paper, we'd wrap them up, put them in a balloon, pass them to someone else, they'd pop the balloon, and they'd write about, and they'd read every single trait that we had, and they would talk about them, and then we would discuss them with each other. So, so different types of personal growth activities like that, which were kind of fun. Um, in terms of cultural communication, when we were doing these activities, these kids were loud, okay? They were anxious, but this, you know, you get, you get to think about it. This was a Friday afternoon, you know, and these are young kids, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. They're going to be loud. They're going to be overexcited. They're going to be exuberant. So it's not, it was really nothing out of the ordinary that you probably experienced in high school with your friends. Okay. Yes, they were, you know, Latino, African American. Some kids didn't speak well, didn't speak English well, but you know, they were kids just like us, and they showed a lot of the same traits that we did. We didn't really have any freedom writer moments. Okay, like it wasn't that dramatic. They were really good kids. They loved talking to us. They would tell us things that they liked to tell us, and we would communicate to the things and lessons that we like, wanted to teach them. So it was an overall great learning experience for us and for the kids too. So for the vision and goals that we got from the MOU and just by learning about the site, um, we knew that we needed to find a new space since the greenhouse wasn't working anymore, so Eversha did that for us and found a nice big industrial arts room that was an old technology room. Um, we had to fill it with plants, which meant that we had to find out what plants we wanted to get and we had to go get them ourselves and bring them in. And same with the seeds too. And then we had to get some kids involved, because there were about 50 to 60 kids that would come to the whole program, but only a couple would choose to come to our specific program during their first and second block hours. So we had to get some kids to keep coming back, and more kids each time. So first time we probably had about two kids actually come. Um, we also needed to do some lessons, like an organic lesson, which is what we did. We had to grow some new plants from the seeds that we bought, including keeping up with the plants, the bigger plants that we bought. And we had to just, in general, keep up with the plants, make sure a lot of them were growing, especially the seeds. We wanted to actually see something happen. And, um, and then we need to keep it all going so it can go on after we're up. And that picture there is of one I just took the other day of a lot of our seeds actually growing. And this picture here is just a picture of us. This was in the beginning. We were making labels for all the bigger plants that we bought with some of the girls that came. So each week we did a lot of different things. Most of the time we did a lot of repotting and just planting of the seeds just to get everything going. And the kids really liked, the, I mean, the teens, they really liked to do that kind of stuff, get their hands dirty. I mean, in the beginning we didn't have any spades or anything. We just had soil, so we'd all pick up a ton of soil with our hands and just put it in the pots and it was just really really messy it got all over the floor every single week but a lot of the weeks we went back and forth um, to the garden factory to keep buying more plants we in the beginning we just got a bunch of plants that were good for indoor and then we ended up getting some cactuses um, and I mean there's more plants to get like hydroponic things and just keep going to fill out our whole budget of two thousand dollars and we also eventually got some space, so we weren't getting our hands dirty. We got some gloves, um, definitely got soil almost every week because we kept running out. Um, right, so when we were sort of implementing the project, we were, Megan and I were trying to talk about what we wanted to teach these kids, what we wanted to get them to get out of this. So we came up with these four here. So we said, the benefits of sustainable horticulture. We think like in today's times, this is one of the most important lessons we can teach kids of how to take, them, take care of themselves 
you know, in terms of nutrition, in terms of uh, what they can do to make their lives better. Guardian and personal growth, that was the second lesson. I would say, in terms of guardian, we learned probably more, we had to learn a lot more than they had to. So it was almost a dual lesson there, where there was a lot of trial and error. We had some plants dying in the first couple of weeks, but we eventually like caught up to it and learned what we had to do. And we eventually were able to pass it on to the kids. Oh, and personal growth too. We had these kids writing in their journals a couple times. Uh, just like what they believed, how they can relate plant growth to their personal life. I try to get the kids to realize that, you know, guys, like, you have to think of the stage of the plant process and stage of your terms of life in terms of maturity, like, going from seed, you know, to small little, small little, you know, little plant thing, and then to a larger plant, into a flowering plant, you know, and even into, like, you know, maybe even a fruit plant. <laughs> but um, the fourth was organic foods demystified, like we just discussed, we're trying to teach them the difference between good foods and bad foods, or the possibility of good foods and bad foods. And, like we just said, the overall gardening process, trying to get these kids to get a new hobby in their lives. And then this picture was, we were just showing that we were very organized. We had a little place to put all those different pots. So there were bigger pots and little small ones for the seeds. And then that banana tree is actually something we bought a few weeks ago. And, and if you see on the top, there's just one, like, it looks just like a big stem going up. And that wasn't there when we bought it. So we know that it is growing. And we repotted that, too. In a funny side story about that banana tree, we were in such a tizzy and rush to buy the plants because we had just gotten uh, the okay to buy them that day. <laughs> then when I bought that, I thought it was a banana plant, so I thought it was just a plant called a banana plant. I had no idea it was a tree. And then after we did some more research, we learned that and, you know, we started big. taking it away. It's going to get about 10 feet tall by the end. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Um, so for our outcomes, um, we just wanted to show a bunch of pictures. Um, we ended up in the technology room, as we said before. There was a whiteboard in there, so it always said, like, the green room and a greenhouse group or something. And it had all of our names on the board. And that was actually the only hanging plant that we bought. Um, it is definitely growing a lot more than it did in the beginning. It looked a lot bigger. We had it kind of in a corner because it was supposed to be hanging and we didn't have anything to hang it on. So we eventually found that it worked better in the window. Yeah, over on the left, uh, this is something we purchased last week. Uh, we're putting our pumpkins in it right now, but it's just an easy thing to grow that stuff in. It's giving a lot of space. The brush actually made that purchase. It was a great idea. Um, I made these two purchases. The, we had two Venus flash traps here. In the first few weeks, they were, they were like really dying and wilting over. We didn't know what was going on. But after we did, finally did some research, which we should have done in the beginning, we learned it needs like constant, constant light. So we actually, the brush had purchased a small lamp for it to put under. And it's doing great now. Our cactus, not so much, it's kind of pulled it over. We might be giving up on that, guys. <laughs> we have to give up on a lot of plants that we've started. Uh, but yeah, pumpkins are really cool. I mean, those are just seeds that we bought. Those aren't things that we bought, like, yeah. already growing. Like, those are seeds that have actually grown. And there's six of them. There's four in there right now because the other two are a little smaller. But, I mean, they're seriously growing really fast. And then this was a picture, this one here is one from the garden factory. They told us about this. This is all like moss in here and these ones are ferns. And they like made like a little tiny village thing. I don't know, it looks cool. But they told us that we could do it too. So we went back and I bought some moss. I mean, it doesn't look as cool, but it is pretty cool. <laughs> Yavarsha came in and brought some rocks, some big rocks that he said that um, the guy at the garden factory said that we should put them on rocks so the roots will kind of grow in between them and then it'll keep growing. I mean, it's kind of hard to ma maintain because it needs constant watering, but you can't really water because there's no dirt under it, so you have to spray it with a spray bottle all the time. And we also put a little fern in there because we thought maybe that would do okay there. We bought two ferns, put one in there, put one in a pot, see which one does better. So our accomplishments, um, this is pretty much it. This was our little flyer that we sent out to all the different teachers at the school, put it in everybody's mailbox so they'll come. It's in this Friday. And um, we're just going to show the whole place, kind of show everyone, friends, family, teachers, whoever wants to come. It's going to be during the whole program time. So some of the kids from the actual whole program will come in and get to see it. So some of them have seen all of it, but not all of them. Um, and then was our goal met? I'd have to say definitely yes. Uh, given the space we were given to work with, 
we made it, we filled that room. The room was cleared out for us, so we had the entire space to work with. And I think we had a great, a great amount of plants uh, to, to continue with. I think they're all pretty much e pretty easy to maintain, maybe besides the vegetables, which will take a little more care come, coming toward the end of the summer. But it's a great starter kit. They can, they can just simply transfer all this stuff up to the greenhouse where it needs to be transferred and continue maintaining it the same way. So I would have to say, yeah, our, our goals were met. Um, I think just for the future, what we're going to have to do is maybe work with these guys, maybe help them come up with a plan how they can maintain it in the future months. Because come summertime, June, July, August, that's when these plants are really going to start taking off. And that's when they need the most care. So that's what we're going to start thinking about for the future. And definitely one of our biggest goals was the responsibility. Just having the kids have some responsibility over these plants. In the beginning, we wanted them to each have a plant, but they kind of just wanted to do everything. A lot of them have gone in and watered it on their own, like watered all the plants and spent a long time doing it too, because they just love to be in the room. And um, I mean, they, they've taken a lot of responsibility. They like to plant the seeds to see them actually grow, because sometimes it was harder to see some of the bigger plants grow. I mean, if you weren't there for a couple weeks and you came back and you saw it, you'd be like, oh yeah, that does look bigger. But most of the time you couldn't really tell. I mean, this was one of the pictures. These are all the plants that we bought in the beginning. And in the background, there's some seeds that hadn't grown yet, but they're definitely much taller now. And we've started to repot those, like with the pumpkins. And, um, and then this picture was of some of the Mike and some of the other kids left around. Yeah, this is definitely a repotting bed. We took that crow in there, and we were just putting it into bigger pots. It's really, it's just, when you come in on a Friday, the plants have a whole week to grow. So a lot of, a lot of repotting and big planting has to be done on that Friday. So we have a small, small amount of time where we can teach a little lesson and then do the repotting, because we really need to take the whole time to do that, given the amount of kids we have. If we only have two or three kids, Megan and I and your Versha and whoever, whoever the other coordinators in there are doing a lot of the work also. And what we could have done better throughout this whole thing, we talked about it, and we thought, I mean, we had a lot of ideas, but the organization of the ideas was kind of, I mean, we should have done a little better. Same with the lessons. We should have just organized it better, did a little more communication, and that would have been better. But, I mean, it really did work out really well, and we got a lot of planting in, and they enjoyed that a lot. So. And then, so, what we learned about ourselves, um, we learned to work with others in Including, like, we learned to work with each other, we learned to work with Eversha, and then also with the teens that came to our group. Um, in the beginning, it was a little difficult. We didn't know anyone there. We were split up in the beginning, so. And then the communication between us two with, like, what we wanted to do each week, um, that was something to get used to. And same with communicating with Eversha and stuff, and really telling her what we wanted to do, and having her communicate back, saying, well, maybe we should do this, or her saying, well, you guys weren't here this week, so we did this activity and just kind of keeping us up to date on everything that was going on. Um, and then the fact that we enjoyed the responsibility, we really liked that we could do all of this kind of without other people telling us what to do. I mean, it was really nice because it was all of our ideas. So with the plants that we bought, it wasn't somebody else that came up with the ideas. Like I went online and I researched different types of indoor plants that we could put in here. and. Um, so that really worked out, and um, they look really great. Right. So uh, here's a little, this. This is just some artwork uh, that the kids were doing over the week when they had lunch there. The room is filled with stuff, uh, little activities that they've been doing over the weeks that maybe and I weren't involved in, but it looks really good. Actually, a student had done this. I thought it was really cool. But maybe take a picture of that. Okay. So yeah, we definitely enjoyed.